Thank you very much, everybody. This is amazing. And you know what? We have 7,000 people outside trying to get in. Can you believe it? In four days, we are going to win the great state of Pennsylvania, and we are going to win back the White House. We are going to win it back. Unbelievable. Look at this. Maybe because I went to school in Pennsylvania. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe. My kids went to school in Pennsylvania. A smart place, Pennsylvania. Real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing Obamacare. It's just been announced that the residents of Pennsylvania are going to experience a massive double-digit premium hike. No good. In the great state of Arizona, where I just left, premiums are going up more than 116 percent. All 67 counties in Pennsylvania are losing Obamacare insurers next year. Lots of luck negotiating, folks. But it won't matter, because it'll be terminated. You won't have to bother. We'll have great health care at much less expense, much lower price. You'll be paying a fraction of what you're paying, and you're going to get really good stuff, I can tell you. Premiums are surging on Obamacare. Companies are leaving. Insurers are fleeing. Doctors are quitting. And deductibles are through the roof. You have deductibles, $13,000, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars Nobody's ever seen anything so ridiculous. And yet Hillary Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare, making it even more expensive. And she also wants to, by the way, raise your taxes very substantially. I'm asking for your vote so we can repeal and replace Obamacare and save health care for every family in Pennsylvania and our country. We're going to do it, folks. We're going to do it. Oh, boy, are we going to win. We are going to win Pennsylvania big. Look at this. I hear we set a new record for this building. And by the way, I didn't have to bring J-Lo or Jay-Z, the only way she gets anybody. I'm here all by myself. I am here all by myself. Just me, no guitar, no piano, no nothing. But you know what we do have? And it's all of us, it's all the same. We all have great ideas and great vision for our country. That's what we have. So I know we have two of our great congressmen here. Tom Marino, Lou Barletta, they're here. Where are they? No, we love them. Folks, they're great. Real change also means restoring honesty to our government. As you know, the FBI has re And you know this. Has, has anybody heard? Has anybody heard? Just a little rumor. Just a little rumor. I think a couple of you have heard. As you know, <laughs> the FBI has reopened its criminal investigation into Hillary Clinton. They are also conducting a second criminal investigation into Hillary's pay-for-play corruption at the State Department. Last night, it was just confirmed that the 650,000 — can you believe that number? — emails they discovered include brand-new emails not previously seen by authorities. Likely, they will be classified information loaded. However, the reports also show that the political leadership at the Department of Justice is trying very hard, actually as hard as they can, to protect Hillary Clinton from the FBI. From the FBI. And I salute the FBI for taking this step.
Remember, John Podesta, her top person, said Hillary Clinton has bad instincts, WikiLeaks. Bernie Sanders said she has bad judgment. So if she's got bad instincts, and if she's got bad judgment, why are we putting her to run for president, right? I mean, why is she running? Bad instinct. Now, you know, Sanders was running against her, so he says bad judgment. Here's a guy who works with her all the time, and he puts in an email that Hillary has bad instincts. That's not what we want for president, folks. And then you have President Obama, instead of getting jobs, instead of taking care of our military, instead of beating ISIS, he's out campaigning all the time. He ought to go back to the Oval Office and go to work. She created an illegal email server to shield her criminal activity, and then she illegally destroyed 33,000 emails after receiving a congressional subpoena. The key word is after. So she gets the subpoena, congressional subpoena. You don't get any better than that. And she said, you better get rid of these. Well, she said it was about the wedding and about yoga, remember? 33,000. But I have a feeling the 650,000 will do very nicely. If she were to win, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis. This will go on for years, folks. If she ever got into the Oval Office, Hillary and her special interests would rob our country blind. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to end government corruption. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear the words we're all about to say. When we win on November 8th, we are going to drain the swamp. I keep telling people I hated that expression. I said, it's so hokey. And then one group heard it, they went crazy. Another group heard it. Then we had a big, big rally in Florida. They went crazy about it. And now I love it. It's true. It's very accurate. At the core of my contract is my plan to bring back our jobs. The great state of Pennsylvania has lost almost 40% of its manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. A deal signed by Bill Clinton and supported by crooked Hillary Clinton. One of the most amazing statistics that I've ever heard, something I thought was a typographical error, America has lost not 700, not 7,000, which I assumed it might be, has lost 70,000 factories since China entered the World Trade Organization. Another Bill Clinton and Hillary-backed deal. We are living through the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. Tyco laid off 808 workers in Harrisburg and Carlisle and moved their jobs to China, India, and Mexico. TE Connectivity laid off 102 workers in Middletown and moved their jobs to China, Vietnam, and Singapore. Kodai laid off 100 workers, moved their jobs to China. Durabon Pipe laid off 145 workers and moved their jobs overseas. A Trump administration will stop the jobs from leaving America, and we will stop the jobs from leaving Pennsylvania. The theft of American prosperity will end. It's ending. If a company wants to fire their workers, leave Pennsylvania, 
move to another country like Mexico, which is taking so many of our companies, and then ship their products back into the United States, where we will soon have, by the way, a very strong and powerful border. We will make them pay a 35 percent tax on those products coming in. Now, you know what's going to happen, right? They're not leaving. They won't leave. And if they do, we're going to make a lot of money. They're going to pay a lot of tax. But they won't leave. They won't leave. A Trump administration will renegotiate NAFTA. And if we don't get the deal we want, we will terminate NAFTA and get a much, much, much better deal for our workers. We will also immediately stop the job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership, another disaster in the making. As part of our plan to bring back jobs, we are going to lower taxes on American business from 35 percent to 15 percent. We will massively cut taxes for the middle class, most importantly. And by the way, Hillary Clinton is going to raise taxes very substantially. You saw that during the debate. By the way, who won the debates? Who won the debate? You know, she kept saying she is working on debate prep for weeks. Oh, she's always working on debate prep. You know, if you're doing this stuff for 35 years, why does she need so much debate prep? Like a week and a half before the debate, she was at her home. Why isn't she leaving? She's working on debate prep. I felt guilty. I mean, how much you have to learn, right? That was just an excuse to rest and go to sleep, okay? Believe me. By the way, two friends of mine, and, and I have to tell you, they are incredible. I don't even know where they are in this. This is a hard one to find. I'll tell you what. You know, a great, great couple Barbara and you, Roan. Do you know about their son, Riley? Riley Roan. Where are they? Are they around here someplace? Where are they? Come up here if you can. Do you mind? Do you mind? Come up. Tell the Secret Service, believe me, they're okay to come up, right? That would be the surprise of all time. These are incredible people. Their son recently passed away in a horrible accident. He was the biggest supporter I had. Young guy, beautiful guy, the most popular person there was. And he was just very special. And I want to introduce, and if you'd like to say a few words, Riley. Riley was their son. As much as some of you like Trump, I like you more than you like me, if you want to know the truth. This boy was our biggest fan. He loved our country. Believe me, he loved our country. Say a few words about our boy, okay? from South Amboy, New Jersey, a very small, small democratic town. We are registered independents. We vote for the person, not the party. My son, Riley, was killed Memorial Day weekend coming home from the Jersey Shore on the Garden State Parkway. My son was a late in life menopause baby a gift from God. He was only 19 years old and my only son. I have three wonderful daughters. Riley loved Mr. Trump. He was obsessed with Mr. Trump. When there were 17 Riley said, Mr. Trump is the nominee. 
When there's one nominee, Mr. Trump, Riley said, Mr. Trump will be president. In Riley's obituary, Mr. Trump was mentioned because Riley loved or loves Mr. Trump. Riley's funeral was over 200 cars. He has very dedicated friends. There were signs, buttons, flags for Mr. Trump. Riley's grave marker has Mr. Trump's name on it along with the Statue of Liberty because he loves America. Richie Schneiderite, a very good friend of my son's, wrote Mr. Trump a letter expressing all about my son and asked Mr. Trump if he could just mention my son Riley on the campaign trail because it would mean so much to my son. When Mr. Trump received the letter, he tweeted, God bless Riley Roan. And a motorcycle... And a motorcycle group put on Facebook, they were donating a brick with Riley's name on it for the wall. When Mr. Trump received the letter, he wrote us a very heart-moving personal letter regarding family and Riley. We never expected to hear from Mr. Trump. We don't know Mr. Trump. He doesn't know us from Adam. He does now. <laughs> within, weeks, within weeks of the letter, we received a phone call from his office asking would we take a phone call from Mr. Trump. We were watching Fox News, and Mr. Trump was in Florida. He was sweating profusely in an airport hangar, complaining of 114-degree weather. We watched him leave the stage, and within minutes, our phone rang. It was Mr. Trump. He spent... He's amazing. He spent a good amount of time on the phone with us, and it was very personal. I'm not going to share what we said, but I will share. Mr. Trump said, if it costs millions, and he would give everything he owned, if it would bring my Riley back. <laughs> what kind of man is this? What kind of man who is running for the highest office in our land, the President of the United States, <sighs> takes out the time from his campaign to call us? God does bless us. Now, all you mothers out there, I want you to put yourself in my shoes for one minute. And you fathers too. I want you to please, please, please vote for Mr. Donald Trump in my, in my son's honor. Please. She does a good job, doesn't she?
I didn't expect that. So we'll dedicate this evening to Riley, okay? Boy, that takes courage. Hard to go back to the economy after that, right? Thank you very much. That was so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Man. Thank you. We will unleash American energy, including shale, oil, natural gas, and clean coal. We will put our miners back to work. We will put our steel workers back to work. You know what's happened to your state? with respect to miners and steelworkers. And Hillary wants to do the opposite. We're going to put them back to work. They're going to be happier than ever before. And my infrastructure plan will provide help for projects like, did you ever hear of a place called the Pennsylvania Turnpike? Need some help. Need some work. We spend all these trillions all over the place. We can't fix our potholes in the Pennsylvania Turnpike or anywhere else. Our our country's going to hell. Unbelievable. You look at our infrastructure of this country. We will also rebuild our inner cities. They are so bad. The African-American community, the Hispanic community, people living in the inner cities have been treated so unfairly. They've been run for sometimes more than 100 years unbroken by Democrats and people with the wrong ideas. They're unsafe. You go shot walking to the store for a loaf of bread. They're unsafe. They have the worst education. They have no jobs. No jobs. You look at unemployment rate of African-American youth, you look at it, it's 58 percent, 58 percent. And I say, give me a chance, I will fix it. I actually go, what the hell do you have to lose? Believe me, I will fix it. We will all fix it together. It'll be a great thing. We have to fix it. We have to fix it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix the inner cities. We will become a rich nation once again. But to be a rich nation, we must also be a safe nation. Hillary Clinton wants a 550 percent increase in Syrian refugees. And that's over and above the thousands and thousands and thousands that are right now pouring into our country under Obama. Her plan will import generations of terrorism, extremism, and radicalism into your schools and throughout your communities. You know what's happening. When I'm elected president, we will suspend the Syrian refugee program. And we will keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. You know, just in standing and watching and looking at this incredible spirit, right up to the tiny corners of the room, with thousands and thousands of people standing outside watching big screens. Anybody want to switch places with them? I say, isn't it sad that the most dishonest people there are, the media, don't spin the cameras and show them this crowd. Isn't it sad?
They never show the crowds. They never show the crowds. Today, Obama had a protester. And the protester, if I have one, they immediately pick out the protester. Even though the protesters, we just found out through WikiLeaks, were paid $1,500 to go into our rallies and be violent, right? And in Chicago, they badly hurt policemen. They badly hurt other people. Although our people can take care of themselves very nicely, I will say. But whenever there's a protester, the only time those cameras move, the only time they pick out a protester because that's a negative thing, right? And yet Obama today spoke in front of a much smaller crowd than this, by the way. And there was a protester, and a protester that likes us. And what happened is they wouldn't put the cameras on him. They kept the cameras on Obama. And they said, that's strange. You saw it today on television, right? He was talking to the protesters, screaming at him, really screaming at him. By the way, if I spoke the way Obama spoke to that protester, they would say, he became unhinged. He became... <laughs> you have to go back and look and study and see what happened. They never moved the camera, and he spent so much time screaming at this protester. And frankly, it was a disgrace. It was, and he shouldn't be there, and he shouldn't be there to start off with. But I'd love to see them spin the cameras. I'd love to see them go outside and see, I mean, this arena is massive, but I'd love to see them go outside and see the thousands and thousands of people that are outside. Look at the cameras. They don't move, folks. They don't move. They don't move. They're right here. They don't move. They don't want to show it, folks. They don't want to show it, but they're not happy. They see the polls. We're leading in Ohio. We're leading in Iowa. We're leading in North Carolina. We're leading in New Hampshire. We're leading in Florida. And I actually think we're leading in the great state of Pennsylvania. I do believe that. Well, I love you people. But they won't show. Watch, you'll go home, you won't see the crowds. They won't, they won't talk about them. You gotta see Hillary, she'll have like three, four hundred people. What a joke, what dishonesty. A Trump administration will also secure and defend the borders of the United States. And yes, and yes, we will build a great wall. Build a great wall. going to pay for the wall? 100%. They don't know it yet, but they're paying. Honestly, they do know it. They do know it, and that's all right. I met two months ago with the president of Mexico. Good guy. We'll work things out. We'll have better relationships with Mexico. We'll have better relationships with China. Look at China. We have a trade deficit with China of almost $500 billion a year. Think of it. China. Think of it. And yet they taunt us with building a massive fortress right smack in the middle of the South China Sea. They're not supposed to be doing it. We have no relationship with China, and yet they rip us. I've had a great relationship with China. The largest bank in the world is a tenant of mine in Manhattan, so many other things. We're going to have a great relationship with China. And I'm not angry at China. 
I'm angry at our leaders for allowing so many different countries to rip us off. That's who I'm angry with. All right, that'll end. Does anybody have any doubt that that's not? And we will have, honestly, we're going to have a better relationship with most of these countries. The reason is they don't respect us. They don't respect Obama. He's like a cheerleader. He's jumping up and down all over the place for Hillary. He shouldn't be doing that. He shouldn't be with her. He's got to be working. You know what? We're better off if he doesn't work. He'll only make bad deals. We'll have to unscramble him. We're better off. We've received the first ever endorsement from our ICE and Border Patrol officers. 16,500. First time they've ever endorsed a candidate. It's just been reported that as a result of our open borders, violent cartels have spread into all 50 of our states. More than 90 percent of those arrested are here illegally. Thank you very much. They are killing innocent Americans, threatening schools, and totally destroying communities. A government that will not protect its people is a government that is unworthy to lead. As Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton allowed thousands and thousands of the most dangerous and violent criminals to go free because their home countries wouldn't take them back. They'd bring them to their countries, and very intelligently, these countries would say, we don't want them, they're murderers, drug kings, they're gang members. So they'd bring them in, and the country would say, we're not taking them back. Bring them back to your country. And she was head of State Department, and she'd say, bring them back. We don't want to, uh, believe me, I promise you this, never once, never once will we be bringing anybody back, never once. Never and if they come back into our country, one year in jail. And if they come back a second time into our country, five years in jail. And then 10 years in jail, and they won't be coming back. They're not going to be coming. Very few, believe me, when they know that, you know what we do? We capture them over and over and over, and we let them go. There have to be consequences, folks. There have to be consequences. Hillary supports totally open borders. There goes your country. And strongly supports sanctuary cities like San Francisco, where Kate Steinle was murdered by an illegal immigrant. And this immigrant, this illegal immigrant, was deported at least five times. Not going to happen anymore, folks. Thousands of Americans would be alive today if not for the open border policies of Obama and Clinton. This includes Americans like Josh Wilkerson, whose mother I've gotten to know during the campaign. Josh was a student in a high school, good student, good kid, everybody loved him. He was murdered at the age of 17. He was tortured, strangled, beaten to death by an illegal immigrant, and then his body was set on fire. Everybody wanted this guy out. They wanted him incarcerated. In July, right here in Pennsylvania, an illegal immigrant with a previous deportation record, horrible record, raped a young child. The illegal immigrant had been arrested for aggravated assault on numerous occasions. But he was set free. He was set free. Everybody that knew him said, please, please don't set him free. He was set free by weak, ineffective policy, by weak, ineffective leadership. A Trump administration will end this vast nightmare of violence. We're talking about thousands and thousands of incidents. We will protect American lives. We will cancel all federal funding to sanctuary cities. We will stop illegal immigration, deport criminal aliens, and dismantle every last criminal cartel that's in this country.
And by the way, our local police, who are so incredible, they know every one of these people. They know everyone. They have to put up with them every day. When we win, you will finally have a government on your side, fighting for your community and protecting your family. We will also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense sequester and rebuild our badly depleted military. We have no choice. That means new resources for the nearby Army War College that will train the next generation of Army leaders. Now, Mosul, I talk about Mosul because I can't believe it. First of all, we had Mosul. It was the way we got out. Whether you wanted to be in Iraq, we shouldn't have been in Iraq, but we had Mosul. It was all done. But then Clinton and Obama did that crazy get out. They got out the wrong way. So they took Mosul back. Now, four months ago, I start hearing, we're going to take Mosul. We're going to take Mosul. And I say, whatever happened to the element of surprise, right? So we had Mosul. But we essentially gave it up. Now we're going to take it. And by the way, just so you understand, I've never even said this before. Who benefits by us getting Mosul? You know who's going to benefit? Iran. We're not going to benefit, because Iran is taking over Iraq. We handed that to them, along with one of the dumbest deals I've ever seen, the $150 billion back. The $1.7 billion in cash that we gave these people, a terrorist, number one terrorist nation. 1.7 billion in cash, and now they feel emboldened, and they go and they harass our ships, and they take our 10 sailors, and humiliate the sailors, humiliate our country. It's not gonna happen with, he said, never happen with you, I promise. It'll never happen with me. I promise you that. I promise you that. But just to finish, because we see the Army College, just to finish, so most of we want to go into Mosul, this is four months ago, because we want to get ISIS leaders, we think they're in Mosul. Well, if you want to get them, you don't talk about it, right? You don't talk about it. You go get them and have the news conference later. Wouldn't that be nice? I always say, whatever happened to the element of surprise? So four months ago, I heard it. Then three months, then two months. In the meantime, you know, they're buried in there. They're using human shields. We have no choice but to take ISIS out. We have to because they're chopping off heads. They're doing things, when you read the history books, not since medieval times has anything like this happened. And it formed during this period of time of Hillary Clinton. Now Hillary is saying, we will get ISIS. What the hell did she let it start for? Now ISIS is in 32 countries all around the world. And what a shame it is. We have people in leadership that are grossly incompetent. We're going to change it. We're going to change it fast, OK? I'm honored to have the endorsement of more than 200 top admirals and generals and 22 Medal of Honor recipients. You saw that last night, right near Fort Bragg. Great place, great people. We had 21,000 people last night. We had more people last night than I have tonight. Although, if you include the people outside, we may have them. We may have them. I'm not sure. I think if you include outside, we may have more than that. Hillary Clinton brought death and disaster to Iraq, Syria, Libya, and she empowered Iran, and she unleashed ISIS all across the world. Hillary and our failed establishment have spent $6 trillion on wars in the Middle East that we don't win. And now the Middle East is in far worse shape and far more dangerous than it ever was before. They've dragged us into foreign wars that make us less safe, shipped our jobs and wealth to other countries, and they've left our borders wide open at home. We go into wars, and we set strong borders. But at home, we have no borders. 
We send our troops to foreign countries to defend their borders, but our politicians refuse to defend our borders. That will change on November 8th. Believe me. That will change. November 8th. That'll be a big day. A Trump administration will never, ever put the interests of a foreign country before the interests of our country. Ever. To the people of Pennsylvania, to all of the people in the United States, I say, from now on, it's going to be America first. Believe me. To all Americans, I say it is time for change and time for new leadership. We need it. We just cannot have four more years of Obama, because that's what we're getting if we do this. It's four more years. It's ISIS running rampant. It's no borders. It's bad jobs. You see, the jobs reports are horrible. You saw what happened just two days ago. The jobs report is a disaster. And they're all bad jobs, because our good jobs are disappearing. It's, uh, it's no good, folks. Four more years, we can't have it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I saw these great men, these great admirals last night, these great generals. These are great people, strong, smart. I saw these unbelievably brave recipients of the Medal of Honor. And I said to him, how would you feel to have Hillary Clinton as your leader? And they're, they're wonderful Americans. And I refuse to tell you what they said. But it wasn't good, believe me. Can you imagine these people taking orders? These great people taking orders from her? Bad judgment, remember. Just think about what we can accomplish in the first 100 days of a Trump administration. We are going to have the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan, and maybe bigger. And Hillary's going to raise taxes. We're going to eliminate every unnecessary job-killing regulation. We will cancel every illegal Obama executive order. Protect religious liberty. Got to do that. Got to do it. It's time. Rebuild our military and take care of our great, great veterans, our great people. They've been horribly, horribly taken care of. Provide school choice and put an end to Common Core. We're bringing our education local. Support the incredible men and women of law enforcement. And today in New York City, two policemen were, as you know, were horribly shot. It goes on and on and on. We're going to save our Second Amendment, which is totally under siege. And appoint justices to the United States Supreme Court, who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. So important. It's time to cut our ties with the failed politicians of the past. Hillary Clinton is the candidate of yesterday. We are the movement of the future. We are the movement of the future. This is a great movement. This is a movement that's never happened before, ever in the history of our country. Ever in the history, there's never been anything like it. And I will say, and I understand how the system works. I understand the system, I guess, as well as anybody understands. I was on the other side. I was enjoying it very much. I also love our country. 
And it can no longer work that way. It's not fair. It can no longer work. We won't have a country. And boy, oh boy, so I went from being an insider, did I ever become an outsider? Wow. I became a serious outsider. But we're all outsiders, and that's the way we like it. We're all outsiders. But it's a movement like has never been seen before. And even of the dishonest people back there and the pundits, they say, some of them, say it's the single greatest political phenomena that they've ever seen in this country. And it is. And that's why we cannot do anything that's going to stop it. We have to get out. Pennsylvania, you are so important. Everyone talks Pennsylvania. If you win Pennsylvania, you're going to win Pennsylvania. And we're doing great all over the state. And I really believe I'm going to do well in Philadelphia because that's where I went to school specifically. Spe I love Philadelphia. Don't disappoint us, Philadelphia. We'll do great things for Philadelphia. But there's so much about Pennsylvania that's so important. And uh, get out November 8th and vote. We're fighting for every parent who lost their child to gangs and drugs and violence. We are fighting for every community whose jobs have been ripped out and shipped to other countries. And we are fighting for every American who believes government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. I'm asking you to dream big, because with your vote, and can you believe this? We're just four days away. You will get the change you've been waiting for for your entire lifetime. And, and folks, I'll tell you what, it's not going to happen again. It's not going to happen in four years. It's over. This is it. He's just saying it's it. This is it, folks. In four years, it's going to be a whole different. It will never, it will never, ever happen again. It's our last chance. It's our last chance. Together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. We will make America great again. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. Go out and vote. Thank you.